and get started. Okay, so we're here um, on to 3.11, the last section. I'll do a lot of it today, maybe even all of it, but if not quite a bit of it. And so I'll leave you room for questions and answers as I promised today and tomorrow and Thursday also. Okay. <clears throat> so I was done lecturing with 310. So I'll start doing some 311, 1 to 17, 30 to 35, and 38. Okay. And after a certain while, I'll stop and then let you ask anything about any previous section in preparation for the test on Friday. So our next exam is Friday, of course. Okay. Right. So let me go ahead. So through the hyperbolics. Okay, I'll just mention off to the side also, some calculators can do hyperbolics. It might say hype, H-Y-P, okay? I'm not sure if a lot of the standard calculators have it or not, okay? Um, this particular calculator, you can. There's H-Y-P way over here, I see. Hype. So if you want hyperbolic sine, cosine, or tangent, you'd have to hit hype first. Okay, but I notice it's not in every calculator, or if you have one of these calculators, it may not be evident right away, but you might have to dig in a catalog so that it's there. Uh, bottom line for our class, you don't really need to use it. Okay, all the hyperbolics that I want you to use, to use, get it from the definition. Okay. All right, so again, what are you responsible for, for this coming Friday's test? Okay, so you need to know everything here. So page 259, okay. you can have all of this. To me, you really just need these, okay. cinch and cos. Okay. They both have e to the x, they both have e to the negative x. They're both divided by two. Cinch has a minus, cos has a plus. These other four guys are just like trig, right? Hyperbolic tangent, sine over cosine, hyperbolic cosecant, the reciprocal of the hyperbolic sine and so on, right? And the only other thing you need are the derivatives. Okay, just these three. Derivative of cinch is cosh. Derivative of cosh is cinch. Derivative of hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic secant squared. You don't have to know these others. They're there. They're true. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm not holding you responsible for that. Okay. You don't need to know any of these, but you have to be able to use them maybe, so you might be asked to use one or more of these, okay? And by the way, uh, I might ask you to prove one of these derivatives. I was gonna show you one of them today. It's very easy proof, you just actually do it, okay? And let's see, you don't need any of that, 263. You don't need any of that, 262. It's curiosities in my opinion. And then we're ready, okay? So 3.11, page 264, here are the problems again for those of you that don't plan on getting a text. And some more. And some more over here. Okay. What I do want to show you first is proof that the derivative of cinch is cosh. And I won't do the other, but you have to be ready for something like this on the exam also. Okay, so I guess you can add as fair game for the exam to prove the derivative of cinch is cosh and vice versa. Okay, so what's the derivative of cinch? Well, by definition, it's e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 prime. There's a negative there. Okay, I would not do the quotient rule here. It's much easier to think of it as one half times e to the x minus e to the negative x prime, and then just treat that as a coefficient. Okay, so prime of course means derivative. So cinch prime means this thing prime, which means this thing prime. So what's the derivative of half times <coughs> a function? It's a half times the derivative of the function. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of negative e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x times negative one by the chain root that makes that into a plus e to the negative x, which I can rewrite as e to the x 
but e to the negative x is actually a negative there. Maybe it looks like it's part of the x. All divided by two. And that by definition is cosh x. Okay, so that proves the derivative of cinch is cosh. And very similarly to prove that the derivative of cosh is cinch. It works almost identical. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna do a bunch of these. And then when I feel like stopping, then I'll let you ask questions. Okay, so 3.11, 1a, cinch of zero. So I just plug in zero. e to the zero minus e to the negative zero divided by two. Cinch is e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by two. So e to the zero is one. e to the negative zero is one. One minus one divided by two. Zero divided by two, zero. Part B is cosh of zero. So it's e to the zero plus e to the negative zero divided by two. One plus one divided by two, two divided by two. So the answer is one. Okay, so no big deal there. <clears throat> okay, so cinch of zero is zero. Cosh of zero is one. Okay, the problem's actually finished, but I'll dig a little deeper. Do you remember what's the sine of zero? Regular trig function, sine of zero. It was also zero. And regular cosine of zero was one. Okay, so cinch zero is zero, just like sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one, just like cosh of zero is one. So that's just an interesting side like That's the only such angle, perhaps, where it's that nice. If you just pick random numbers, it's probably not going to be true. Okay, I am actually going to address um, 5b, hyperbolic inverse cosine of 1. Cosh to the negative 1 of 1 means inverse hyperbolic cosine of 1. Okay, and I'm kind of cheating right here. So how can I possibly figure that out? Let's look at the answer to what we just got. 1b. Cosh of 0 is 1, right? So if cosh of 0 is 1, inverse function means you just switch them around. So that means inverse hyperbolic cosh of 1 is 0. So the answer to 5b is automatically 0 because cosh of 0 Cosh of zero is one, means inverse cosh of one is zero. Okay. So the answer to five B is zero. Inverse hyperbolic cosh, hyperbolic cosine of one is zero because cosh of zero is one, that's all. Okay. Now, how do I do something like three A, cosh of ln five, so I use the definition of cosh, which is e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by two. So e to the ln five plus e to the negative ln five divided by two. Okay, <clears throat> now this you should be familiar with, e to the ln five, five. Right, that just cancels out. So the next step is that's just gonna be five. Okay, what do I do with e to the, negative ln five, that negative is in the way. The trick is to make that a negative one and make it climb back up as an exponent. Remember that if you have a coefficient ln something, that coefficient can climb up over here. So I'll make it as e to the ln five to the negative one. Okay, so again, negative ln five, treat it as negative one ln five, and a property of logs is that you can take a negative one and make it up here. So it's e to the ln, five to negative one. Now the E and the LN are next to each other. So I can cross that out and cross that out. So I have five plus five to the negative one divided by two. And I just have to clean that up. Five to the negative one means one fifth. So five plus one fifth divided by two. Okay, that looks pretty bad. So 
So to clean that up, I'll multiply the numerator and denominator of the main fraction by five, multiply that by five, multiply that by five. <clears throat> that gives me five times five is 25, plus one fifth times five is one. So 25 plus one divided by two times five is 10, 26 over 10. So final answer is 13 over five. Now we have a whole bunch of problems asking to prove the identity. Okay. Now remember in trig, you did a lot of identities, right? Prove the left side and right side are equal. So we're doing a lot of the same stuff here. Prove the left side and the right side are equal. Okay, so I'll show you some of those. Okay, number nine, show that cosh x plus cinch x is equal to e to the x. Okay, well, th there's really nothing to do on the right-hand side. So all the work must be on the left-hand side. So I just appeal to the definition. Okay, so what is cosh x? Cosh by definition literally is e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by two. Go ahead and put it on your cheat sheet. Plus cinch x. Okay, so again, when I say cosh or cinch, it's hyperbolic. Officially, I'm supposed to say hyperbolic everything. Hyperbolic cosine, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic tangent, hyperbolic cotangent, hyperbolic secant, hyperbolic cosecant. To me, that takes too long. So if I can make it sound faster with cosh and cinch, that's what I do. Okay, this is e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by two. This is e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by two. Fortunately, they have a common denominator. So if I add these up, these two guys cancel out. I have e to the x plus e to the x, two e to the x divided by two, which is indeed e to the x. That was the end of the proof. So by the way, these two lines are not just arbitrary. It does mean end of proof sometimes, or what was to be proved. So there, I've, I'm done with the proof. I proved that that plus that is indeed e to the x. Okay, now a much harder one is 11, which kind of looks like an identity from trig. Cinch of x plus y, cinch x cosh y plus cosh x cinch y. You had a formula from trig that was the sine of a sum, sine of x plus y was sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. Okay, so how do I prove it? Okay, so Sine of x plus y, cinch, sorry, cinch of x plus y, cinch x cosh y plus cosh x cinch y. Okay, so the way I would do this proof is to draw a line down where the equal sign is. Okay. The reason for this line is so that you, you're not supposed to cross. Okay. I can work on this, I can work on this independently, but I'm not supposed to cross which means you cannot multiply both sides by two. You cannot divide both sides by X or something like that, okay? So I work on this, independently work on this, and I keep going until I get them to match, okay? So this is like an impenetrable barrier. You can't cross until the left and the right side are the same. All right, so work, I work on this for a while until I can go no farther, and then I work on this, and then hopefully I can get them to match. <clears throat> okay, cinch of x plus y by definition is e to the x plus y minus e to the negative parentheses x plus y divided by two. And then if I just distribute these, I have e to the x, e to the y minus e to the negative x, e to the negative y divided by two, okay? <clears throat> Look at this, do you agree with this? You're probably more comfortable with going this direction. e to the x, e to the y, is e to the x plus y, but you, that means you can go backwards also. And likewise, you're probably comfortable with this, e to the negative x, e to the negative y is e to the negative x minus y, but that means you can go backwards also. Okay, and that's about all I'm gonna do here. So my goal is to get the right-hand side to look like this. As you can see, I do eventually get that to happen. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff to write down, that, that, <clears throat> that, and that. <clears throat> so 
is just look at the definition. Cinch x, e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by 2. Cosh y, e to the y plus e to the negative y divided by 2. Plus cosh x, e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by 2. Times cinch y, e to the y minus e to the negative y divided by 2. Okay, so I've got a couple of foils, right? Uh, by the way, my common denominator is four, right? Two times two is four, two times two is four. So I've got this great big mess all divided by four. <clears throat> so I've got two binomials here, foil. First, outer, inner, last. Same thing here, first, outer, inner, last. So there's gonna be four here, four here, eight total. Eight total multiplications. So here we go. <clears throat> e to the x, e to the y. Outer. E to the x, e to the negative y. Inner. Minus e to the negative x, e to the y. Last. Minus e to the negative x, e to the negative y. So I'm done with FOIL for this. First, outer, first, outer, inner, last. First, outer, inner, last. Plus, do the same thing here. First, e to the x, e to the y. Outer, minus e to the x, e to the negative y. Inner, plus e to the negative x, e to the y. Last, minus e to the negative x, e to the negative y. These two cancel out. These two cancel out. I got two of these, two e to the x, e to the y. I got negative two of these, negative two e to the negative x, e to the negative y. Factor out the two, two parentheses, e to the x, e to the y, minus e to the negative x, e to the negative y, all divided by 4. Cancel the 2 with a 4. e to the x, e to the y, minus e to the negative x, e to the negative y, all over 2. And these are indeed finally equal. So there we go. They are indeed equal. Okay, so that was a pretty complicated one. Okay, how about one more of the proofs? 17. Hyperbolic tangent of ln x is x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay, so how do I do that now? Well, hyperbolic, there's nothing to do here. So I leave that alone. Hyperbolic tangent is cinch divided by cosh. Okay, now, I didn't quite write the whole cinch and cosh here, but I have to convince you of something. Cinch divided by cosh. Cinch divided by cosh, okay? Or even here. If I take that divided by that, the twos will cancel out. Okay? I got e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by 2 all over e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by 2. These twos are going to go away. Okay? One way you can convince yourself of that is to multiply top and bottom by 2 and it'll be gone. Okay? So I'm only going to put that part and that part, the twos will disappear. That's what I'm claiming here. Okay, so there's no divided by two, they're gone. Okay, so e to the ln x minus e to the negative ln x, that's how you do cinch. 
and for cosh e to the ln x plus e to the negative ln x. So what I'm indicating here in red is again divided by two, divided by two, they can cross out. You can just multiply top and bottom by two. All right, we already played this game. Pretend that's a negative one. Pretend that's a negative one. They climb back up. So it's e to the ln x to the negative one. Same thing here, e to the ln x to the negative one. Now that the e and the ln are back to back, cancel, 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 cancel. So I have x minus x to the negative one, one over x, divided by x plus x to the negative one, one over x. Okay, multiply top and bottom by x and you're done. x squared minus one over x squared plus one in the proof. That's what we were trying to prove right over here. Okay, so that's it, folks, for that. So all we have left are some derivatives, and that's about it. Okay. Find the derivatives. So I tried to tiptoe around the ones that only had hyperbolic sine, cosine, and tangent. So no secant, cosecant, cotangent. Right? So that's the reason why I had funny looking assignment. Okay. There were some evens. So I'll try to show you as many evens as possible. Okay, f of x is e to the x cos x. Okay, so that looks like a product rule. <clears throat> First times derivative second, e to the x. Derivative cos is cinch, not negative cinch. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, but the derivative of cosh is cinch. Plus the second function, cosh x, times the derivative of the first, which is e to the x. And that's basically it. You can factor out the e to the x. So I took out the e to the x, cinch x plus cosh x. And you can just stop there, as far as I'm concerned. Even though you could go farther. Okay, 32. Try to do the evens for you. G of X is cinch squared of X. Okay, so the outside function is squaring. So two cinch X to the first power times the derivative of cinch X, which is cosh X. You can leave it like that. You can actually do something fancy that that says identity, but let's not bother. Okay, 34, doing the even ones for you because you don't have the answer in the back of the book. Ln of cinch t So how do you differentiate ln? You go one over that, right? So f prime is one over cinch t times the derivative of cinch t, which is cosh t. Okay, so ultimately you have cosh divided by cinch. That should be combined to hyperbolic cotangent, or I guess you could say cough. Okay, so the best final answer is cough of t, hyperbolic cotangent. Okay, 38, which is the last one given. So one plus cinch of t divided by one minus, one minus cinch of t. Okay, so quotient rule. Bottom times the derivative of the top. Derivative of the top is cosh t minus top one plus cinch t times the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of one minus cinch t is negative cosh t. <clears throat> There's a double negative here, so that's why I, in red put them as positive. All over one minus cinch t squared. Okay, so that stays the same. Multiplying out the numerator, I have cosh t minus cinch t cosh t plus cosh t plus cinch t cosh t. These two happen to cancel out. So it definitely was worth it 
to clean this up. So in the numerator, I have cos t and another cos t, so two cos t over one minus sinh t quantity squared. All right, um, I was gonna do uh, 31 and go back and do 15, then I was done. Okay, so I'll be done in a few minutes. So if you wanna start asking me questions or if you wanna put stuff in the chat even now uh, in preparation for the test you may. So 31, hyperbolic tangent radical X. Okay. So derivative hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic secant. So hyperbolic secant squared of radical X times the derivative of radical X. Remember that's X to the half. So one half X to the minus a half. Okay, then just clean that up. Uh, two is in the bottom, radical X is in the bottom, hyperbolic secant squared is on top. Okay, so hyperbolic secant squared of radical X over two radical X, that's the best final answer. Okay, in case you're wondering, no, you cannot cancel the radical X out because this radical X is tied with the sec hyperbolic secant. Okay, it's not a multiplication, so I can't just cancel these out. Okay, folks, uh, I'll go back and do 15, then I'm done. And then I'm actually finished with everything. Be like that. Okay, so I'm done with what you need for the test. All right, so we can have tomorrow and Thursday for question and answers and whatever left over you want to ask today, if you were. Okay. So everything I will need to give you in terms of lecture will be done by today. Okay, so problem 15, that's pretty much about it. Cinch of 2x is 2 cinch x cos x. Okay. Cinch of 2x equals 2 cinch x cos x. Okay, so I draw myself this dividing line again, which means I can't cross. So I'm not allowed to, let's say, divide both sides by 2, for instance. Okay, you work on this separate from this, you can only cross when I get them equal. <clears throat> All right, so by definition, cinch of 2x is e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x divided by 2, and that's really all I can do on that side. So just forget about that now. <clears throat> okay, separately. So it's almost like I just completely covered this. I forget about it. Two, now the definition of cinch is e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by two. The derivative, uh, sorry, the definition of cos is e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by two. And I notice these twos can cancel out. So I got the two in the bottom. And now look at multiplying these out. This is like a minus b, a plus b, right? I don't have to do FOIL, just first and last. So e to the x times e to the x, e to the 2x, I add the exponents, minus e to the negative x, another e to the negative x, e to the negative 2x. And there it is, they are indeed equal. All right, so that's it folks, I'm completely done with everything here. So I can let you have uh, the rest of today and tomorrow and Thursday for questions and answers. If I think I can sneak it in, I'll go ahead and sneak in some of 4.1 just to get started with that, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm done with that. Let me now get my clipboard ready and open it up to Q and A session. Okay, so let me Right down, so 3.10, number nine, 3.5, 17, 3.465B. Okay, about the barrier, the reason why I put the barrier for the proofs is you're not supposed to cross the barrier. Okay, so I have a dividing line for the left and the right side. Okay, so you can't touch each other's side until you get them to be equal. Okay, that's to indicate you're not allowed to do something on both sides. Okay, so, uh, all right, so that's what I see in the chat now. Let me just start with that, I guess.
Okay. So let me see what I'm going to do here. Three point ten number nine. Okay, three point ten number nine. Verify the given linear approximation. Okay, so this is the back of the book. One plus half x. Okay, so that's going to be fourth root of one plus two x. Okay. Squiggly equal one plus one half x at x equals zero. So a good linear approximation is this. Why do we want to do it? Well, would you rather work with that or that, right? That's way better. Okay, they don't give me the y value, but I can just plug in uh, one, right? Plug in zero, I get one, fourth root of one is one. Okay, so the function is one plus two x raised to the one fourth power. F prime is one fourth, one plus two x to the one fourth minus one is negative three fourths. Then by the chain rule times the derivative of the inside, which is two. So two cancels with a four, leaving you with a two in the bottom. And all this stuff comes on the bottom too. One plus two x to the positive three fourths. Okay, two over four is one half, and that comes downstairs. Okay, now I'm supposed to plug in zero for the derivative. F prime of zero is one half. As I plug in zero here, I get one. One raised to anything is one. <clears throat> so that's my m. <clears throat> Point slope. Y minus y one equals m times x minus x1, except keep going, y equals one half x plus one. We would call that L of x. And you can see that fits one plus a half x. That's exactly what we got over there. Okay, so it matches. Okay, 3.517, somebody asked for. Okay, um, I want to do that. Okay, well, inverse tangent of x squared y equals x plus xy squared. Find dy dx by implicit differentiation. Okay. So inverse tangent goes one over one plus x squared y squared. Derivative of inverse tangent is one over one plus x squared. If you have something different, it's one over one plus that different thing squared. And then times the derivative of the inside, which is first times the derivative of the second, dy dx plus second times the derivative of the first, which is two x equals the derivative of the right side, derivative of x is one. xy squared is a product. So first times derivative of the second. Plus second times the derivative of the first, which is one. Okay, so unfortunately I got a real messy situation here. The only way to do this is to distribute, unfortunately. So x squared over one plus x to the fourth y squared dy dx plus two xy over one plus x to the fourth y squared equals one plus two x squared y dy dx plus y squared. Okay. And now you got to get all the dy dx's on the same side. So I will move this over here and move this over here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sorry folks, there's something going on here that I have to take care of real quickly. So I'm going to disappear just for 
a quick moment. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so all my dy dx's are on this side. dy dx times that. And then minus that. So dy dx over there. And then on this side, I got one plus y squared. And this does not have a dy dx, so that moves over. 2xy over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared. OK, then you divide both sides by this, which is going to be a big mess. That's essentially it. OK, so I got to go back up. I reached the bottom of my paper for that one. So. But I'm basically going to write that on top and that on the bottom. Okay, it's that divided by that. So here we go. dy dx is 1 plus y squared minus 2xy over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared all over x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared minus 2x squared y. Okay. Um, you could do more algebra. I don't think I'm going to make you do that. <coughs> Excuse me. That's already pretty bad as it is. So I'll just leave it like that. Okay, let's see. 3.465B. 3.465B. By this. Okay. So V prime of one. Okay, V is G of F of X. Okay. V of X is G of F of X. So by the chain root, V prime of X is G prime of F of X times F prime of X. That's how the chain root works. Now I just plug in one. V prime of one is G prime of F of one times F prime of one. Okay, so I need F of one. Okay, f of one, red function, one, it looks like it's two. So this is two. <clears throat> okay, and now the primes mean slope. G prime of two, slope at two. Slope at two. Uh, there is no slope, it's undefined, right? There's no derivative here, it's a corner point. So, it does not exist. Okay, so let's see, I'm caught up there, I think. Let's see what else is in the chat. Okay, a lot more has come in. Uh, let's see how much time I got for these. 3.521, 3.923. I'm going to write some of these down, but I don't know how far I'm going to get. But you can ask again tomorrow or Thursday. That's fine. So 3.6, 9, and 17. 3.161. 
<clears throat> okay, 3.521, 3.923, Okay, I think I've got everything here. So give that a try. Okay. So let's see, 3.521, let's see if I can do that quickly. Max plus X squared plus of X cubed equals 10 and it says f of 1 equals 2 find f prime of 1 f of x equals x squared times f of x cubed comes out to be 10 f of 1 equals 2 find f prime of 1 okay so let's find the derivative f prime of x plus product root first times the root of the second three times f of x squared times f prime of x plus second times the root of the first which is 2x and that's equal to zero okay i differentiate both sides with respect to x f prime of x product rule, first times derivative of this, three f of x squared times f prime of x, plus second function times derivative of the first. Okay, and now how about I'll plug in one everywhere. Put a one here and a one here and a one here and a one here. So f prime of one plus one squared times three times f of one, which I now know to be two, Where f prime of one plus f of one cubed times two times one equals zero. So I just put a one everywhere. One there, one there. I should have put a one there, and there, and there, and there, and there. So f prime of one plus one times three. F of one, they told me, is two. So that's two squared f prime of one plus f of one again it's two two cubed times two times one equals zero okay i think we're getting there f prime of one so let's see three times four is twelve oops not equal plus twelve f prime of one plus two four eight sixteen equals zero. Okay, f prime of one plus 12, f prime of one is 13. f prime of one plus 16 equals zero. Subtract 16, divide 13. So f prime of one is negative 16 over 13, it looks like to me. Okay. Uh, let's see, 3.923. Let's see if I have time to do that one. Okay, I won't have time to do that in the time left over, unfortunately. So I have to pick and choose. Maybe 3.161. Okay. 3.161, I might have to stop after this one. But we're done. I have no more lecture for the chapter. So I can take lots of questions and answers tomorrow and Thursday. And maybe I'll even sneak in you know, some of chapter four, as I said. 3.161, find an equation of the normal line, y equals radical x that is parallel to the line 2x plus y equals one. Okay, so normal line. Parallel to 
2x plus y equals 1. Okay, that means y equals negative 2x plus 1. So the slope that you want is negative 2. Okay, now you want a line parallel to that. So I do the negative reciprocal. So the m that I want, I'll put m wanted, the slope that I want is 1 half. So I want the derivative to be 1 half. So y prime is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over 2 radical x. Set that equal to 1 half. Cross multiply. 2 radical x equals 2. Divide by 2. Radical x equals 1. So x is equal to 1. 1 comma 1. And let's see, do they want the equation of the normal line? Yes, so y minus one equals one half x minus one. Okay, folks, and it looks like we're out of time. So um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, thanks, Prasanna, for that. And Prasanna, if you have any other review sessions that you want between now and the test on Friday, you may. Uh, so thanks for your help, Prasanna. Um, and you can just put that in the chat eventually for that. Okay, well, it's one o'clock, folks, so we're out of time. You can ask much more questions uh, tomorrow and Thursday. Um, and maybe I'll start by sneaking in some of chapter four. All right. Okay, that'll do it, folks. So have a good afternoon. Um, see you next time. Bye.